Good morning. Thank you all for attending. We are here for the District 5 Design First Quarter Project Presentations for Fiscal Year 2022. I'm Jennifer Link with Consultant Project Management. I have a few information updates. We will be hosting a presentation for all projects each quarter. We also have a new process to request marketing meetings. You can request one 15 minute with the long list short list TRC and one 15 minute with the grading TRC. They are available on the cap. If you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them into the chat box and I will be reading them to the PMs as we go along. I would like to introduce Casey Lyon to begin. Hi, good morning. My name is Casey Lyon. I am the project manager for the district-wide environmental permitting support contract that is going to be identify, uh, advertised here soon. Um, it's FPID 241061-1-32-08. Next slide. So project overview, this uh, contract currently provides support for our in-house permitting team. Uh, in-house permit support can include plans reviews and permit application reviews. Uh, it, this contract also does all of our in-house permitting for the design office and sometimes for the maintenance office. And this contract also provides in-house staff um, as needed. Uh, we have programmed 1.5 million for the next five years and a little different from the cap, we have omitted a major work type 3.1. So the major work types are now 3.2 and 3.3, and the minor work types are 8.1, 8.2, 9.1, and 9.2. Next slide. The schedule uh, for the procurement process, our ad is going to post on March 8th um, for the planned ad post. Uh, it advertises on March 22nd, and letters of interest are due on April 5th. Next slide. The interviews will be on May 11th, uh, with final selection being on May 24th. We plan to execute uh, this contract on July 13th. These are fiscal year 22 funds. Next slide. The TRC members for this project are Efren Rivera, Catherine Owen, and Karen Snyder. Farrell Hickson will be doing the long list short list, so uh, he will be the sole person who will be providing uh, that to the TRC members. I do want to say that marketing meetings are available. We are doing the marketing meetings a little bit different than uh, Jennifer just said. We're, we're going under the old format, so they are 30 minutes, uh, and you will get all the TRC members and the uh, and Farrell Hickson. Next slide. Does anybody have any questions? One just came in. Uh, it says, will the shortlist TRC member also participate in the final TRC rankings? Uh, no, solely do the uh, final selection. The um, the uh, longlist shortlist person, uh, Farrell Hickson, is is just responsible for, for selecting uh, three teams to move forward. All right. All right. Thank you. And next, we have Anthony Miller. Good morning. My name is Anthony Miller, and I'll be the project manager for 447-593-1, State Road 50 at McGuire Boulevard Signal Rebuild Project. Next slide, please. This project is located in the city of Orlando in Orange County. As you can see from the map, the project is located between Patch Square Mall and the Orlando Executive Airport. The purpose of the project is to provide crash reduction countermeasures at the intersection based on recommendations from the intersection safety study completed in February of 2020. This will include reconstructing the signals and other minor intersection improvements. Next slide. Design is expected to start in August of 2021 and be completed November 2025 after the right-of-way phase. Design is estimated at $705,000. Right away will begin in July of 2023 and is estimated at 1.4 million. The letting date is January 2026 and construction is estimated at $696,000. Next slide. Work. Scope of work will be to implement the recommendations from the intersection safety study. This will include replace the existing box fin with mast arms, uh, pedestrian blankout signs with leading pedestrian interval, 
new pedestrian signals. There's ITS elements and coordination, lighting upgrades, reconstruct all pedestrian ramps, increase the curb return radius in the southeast quadrant to provide greater separation between ramps, and a small section of concrete slab replacement to accommodate the new return and drainage improvements. Next slide. Uh, this is a very busy urban commercial area located northeast of downtown Orlando. The intersection has experienced drainage issues that are being addressed by another project currently in design. Agreements with local agencies are anticipated. Additional right of way is needed for the new signals and driveway reconstruction. The Orlando Executive Airport is located just to the southeast of, the, uh, of this intersection. For key dates and reminders, the advertisement will post April 19th, 2021. It'll cover three projects. This one, which is 447-593-1, 445-587-1, and 447-698-1. The letters in selection will be based only on this project, 447-593-1. Uh, five firms will be shortlisted, and three will be selected, one for each project. And Heidi credits the project manager for the two other projects, and she'll go over those next. But that's it for, for mine. So if there's any questions, you could, uh, I could field those. There is a question, Anthony, but it's not for your project. So I'll answer this one. It says, similar to the CAP presentation, can this presentation be added to the GoTo handouts? It will be um, uploaded to the CAP plan um, probably tomorrow or the next day. All right, I don't see any questions, so we will move on to Heidi Trivet. Again, my name is Heidi Trivet. I'm the project manager for FPID 4455A7-1. This is US-1 at Bay Boulevard. It's a traffic signal reconstruction project. Next. The project is located in the unincorporated area of Brevard County in the area of St. John. Again, it's a traffic signal reconstruction and it's based on a safety study that was completed, I believe it's actually in 2015. Um, that date on there I just found out yesterday is incorrect. So it's a 2015 safety study, which I just received and will be uploading to the CAP plan shortly. Next. The project schedule and estimated cost. The design is expected to begin in August of this year for design costs currently at 765,000. There is right away currently involved and that would begin July of 2023. That cost is estimated at 217. And the letting date for construction is currently 2025 and estimated to be 520,000. Next question, or sorry, slide. The scope of the work will include replacement of the existing diagonal spam signal with mass arms. We want to provide flashing yellow arrows for the eastbound right turns. Crosswalk on the north side of the intersection. Reconstruct the curb returns. Reconstruct the traffic separator on Fay Boulevard. Currently minor drainage adjustments and intersection lighting. Next. As you can see with the project context, Fay Boulevard is primary east to west corridor. It's in a densely populated residential area with a park to the immediate southeast of the intersection and condominiums at the eastern side. And the Space Coast Area Transit does run along US-1. Next. The project is advertising, please ignore the March. It's April 19th, 2021. This is for mine, Anthony's, and the next project that I'll pre be presenting on. The three project numbers are shown, 445587, 446698, and 447593. As Anthony mentioned, the letters will be based on his project, and we plan to shortlist five firms, select three. Next. And if there's any questions, we can take those now. I know that there are some for Anthony. Yep, Anthony. Anthony um, 
there was a question. Please confirm the study that you mentioned will be included in the files once the link is fixed. Yes, yeah, I have the study. I, I, it should have already been sent to CINE to upload, so okay. it should be all ready to go up. Okay, thank you. I need to check the link, Anthony. Um, Heidi told me that. So I apologize to the firms. All right, Heidi, I don't see any other questions. You can continue. Okay, let's go to the next slide, Cindy. The next project that I will be also the project manager on is US 92 at Lockhart Street. This one is a signalized pedestrian crossing, financial project number 447698-1. Next. This project is located in Daytona Beach in Volusia County, and it is adjacent to Bethune-Cookman University. The design includes constructing a new traffic signal with pedestrian crossings. And it was developed from a 2020 pedestrian mid-block crossing study. Next. The design is scheduled to begin in July of this year. The current design cost is 618,000. Right of way is currently included and is expected to begin in 2023. The current design, excuse me, right of way cost is 289,000. And construction is expected to let 2025 at the cost of 391000 Next. The scope of the work includes a double mast arm signal converting the eastbound two-way left to a westbound directional left, adding crosswalks on eastern and southern lakes, pedestrian lighting retrofit, there will be some coordination with the local agency to determine if there will be decorative lighting and sidewalk and reconstruction, excuse me, sidewalk reconstruction ADA curb ramps. Next. US 92, which is also International Speedway Boulevard, is a main east to west route through Daytona Beach. As previously mentioned, it's adjacent to Bethune Cookman University. The village is at Halifax apartment is to the west. Livingston Street to the east, about 700 feet from here is signalized. Next. Some of the key reminders, the project advertises in April 19th, 2021. With the projects previously mentioned and the letters will be based on Anthony's project as previously stated. Five shortlisted firms selecting three. Next. That's all I have. If you have any questions, go ahead and enter them now. I think we're good, Jennifer. I think we're good. All right, thank you, Heidi. And next I have Joseph Fontanelli. All right, good morning. My name is Joseph Fontanelli. I am thrilled and excited to uh, present these two projects. Um, unlike the other ones, I am going to run through these two different projects, 441143-2 and 447106-2, and then, uh, and then address any questions after that. They certainly do have the same um, flavor and are, are based off the same safety study. So with everybody's permission, I will go through those two projects first and then address questions uh, following those two presentations. Thank you. So again, I'm here to present two projects, the first one being 441143-2. If you go back for me one second, please. Um, this is uh, on State Road 526, otherwise known as Robinson Street from Garland Avenue to Mills Avenue. I, again, am the project manager, Joseph Fontanelli. Next slide. So this is located in downtown Orlando. In fact, looking at these two projects, we are literally changing the face of one of the biggest urban cores in District 5 in Orlando. Um, we are really embracing the, uh, you know, the multimodal concept that D5 has been pushing, and we are looking at pedestrian improvements, bicycle improvements, and really embracing all of those utilizing our facilities throughout this corridor. This project will include lane elimination and multimodal improvements to include bicycle tracks, more to come on that as well as a shared use path. And again, safety being the number one priority. These projects were developed from a 2019 Robinson Street conceptual design report 
as well as a 2017 safety design report. Both of these will be uploaded to the CAP once um, we have all the finalization from the documents, so more to come on that. Both the 441143-2 and 447106106-2 will be let together and will be advertised together. And these all will include the resurfacing on Sitrick 526. Next slide, please. I just want to caveat and say that um, looking, if you look at Project Suite at this point in time, there is some disparity between the information that are on the screen and what you might find in Project Suite. This, in a, in a very uh, you know literal sense of the word, is a very fluid project, unique project, so things are changing. Right now, our intent is to begin design in October of 2021, with the design for this particular project at $2.4 million. Right now, everything is, is designed to be within the existing right-of-way. Let me kind of talk about that for one second. There is some coordination with the city of Orlando as Orlando is looking to acquire right away in their interest that will be transferred over to the department. This can or may not impact the, the schedule and that will have to be coordinated as the design moves forward. Keeping with the idea that everything will, will be within the existing right away, letting is, is scheduled to be in July of 2023 with the design excuse me, with the construction being at $5.7 million. Next slide, please. So primarily this is a milling and resurfacing project with numerous safety improvements. We'll be widening areas, we'll be adding uh, medians. Lane elimination provide a center dual left turn lane and medians at specified uh, sections throughout the corridor. We're also gonna be providing bicycle facilities to include a two-way bicycle track. This naturally will bring in enhanced markings um, and as well as signage to identify these bicycle tracks. We'll include sidewalks and ADA improvements to those sidewalks and a shared use path. We're looking at on street parking and curb and sections uh, extensions, um, drainage upgrades. We'll be doing traffic signal modifications and reconstruction, as well as retrofitting the lighting throughout the corridor. There have to be coordination with the city of Orlando for aesthetic features to include aesthetic, uh, aesthetic lighting, as well as featured crosswalks, as well as, as I mentioned previously, the um, marking, uh, signing and part markings, ex excuse me, that will enhance the bicycle track as well as the pedestrian features. Next slide, please. So what we have here in the next uh, couple slides is just some excerpts from the technical scope and the conceptual design. This by no means will um, replace looking over the technical scope that will be provided on the cap. This is just giving you an example of some of the work that is in, intended throughout the area. As you can see, there's a number of improvements and there's a number of different facilities that we'll be working with. Again, back to the multimodal um, concept that we're dealing with here. We have a transit, we have railroads, we have airports within the vicinity. So there is a lot of coordination that have to be done throughout the, the scope of this project. Next slide. Again, just some examples of some typical improvements we'll see throughout the corridor. Next slide. And one more time, just some typical examples. We do see some on-street parking, and we also do see some lane elimination, lane repurposing, um, enhanced features, signage, again, for the multimodal improvements designed throughout this corridor. Next slide. So the project context, this is in downtown Orlando. We have a number of different context classifications from C4, C5, C6. We have the Central Business District, Lake Eola District, and the Neighborhood District. We also have to coordinate with the I-4 Ultimate um, construction projects between Hewley Avenue and Garland Avenue. This section is mostly commercial transitioning to a residential on the east end. So again, we have a numerous different stakeholders, different types of um, customers that we will be dealing with throughout this corridor. We have Lake Eola Park, Howard Middle School, the view at Lake Eola, Reeves at Lake Eola, and the St. James Cathedral that are among most notable features throughout this corridor. Next slide, please. The public engagement plan will be consistent and ongoing. As of right now, there has been extensive, extensive coordination with the city of Orlando. And my intent as a project manager is to continue that coordination. 
immediately after um, design um, and project execution, we will have a meeting with those agencies. We'll begin and build off of these relations that have been built and we'll continue that coordination moving forward. One of the key points of this project is to continue that coordination and to make sure that we create a corridor that's usable for all users. Next slide, please. Again, if you go back to project suite, there might be some disparity in the schedules that is currently posted here. We are planning to advertise this project on May 17th, 2021. The advertisement will cover both projects, 441143-2 and 447106-2. More to come on the 447106-2. The letters will be based simply on 441143-2. As we look at the TRC members, a single point TRC contact for the long list shortlist will be Mid Esther, Mid Ed Castori, while the grading TRC will be Miss Annette Brennan, Todd Long, and Todd Alexander. With that being said, we'll move into the next project that we've covered under this bundle. Next slide. You'll find that in this presentation, I'll probably repeat myself a lot because the flavor is the same and it is all based on the same safety study on the Robinson Street corridor. I again am Joseph Fontanelli, the project manager for these projects. Next slide. This is just an extension of the previous project talked about. Again, located in downtown Orlando. The context classification this one is, is will be simply C4. We are still looking at delay elimination and multimodal improvements discussed in the previous project. These improvements were developed from the 2019 uh, Street Conceptual Design Report. These reports, as mentioned, will be um, available on the cap, again, once all these documents have been finalized. This will be let and will be advertised with Project 441143-2 that was previously reported. This, again, primarily is a resurfacing project in State Route 526 and with multimodal improvements. Next slide. This project will have a concurrent schedule with the previous project discussed. We will begin design in October of 2021. The design budget for this project is $1.2 million. This again will be within the, with this, within the existing right-of-way. We are working with the city of Orlando to acquire right-of-way and we'll be coordinating that and extending the coordination that has been developed throughout the year. The construction with letting in July of 2023 is estimated to be $3.4 million. Next slide, please. This, as you look at the scope of work, will include milling resurfacing and numerous multimodal and safety improvements. Keyword, my friends, safety. Lane elimination to provide center dual left turn lanes and medians at specified sections throughout the corridor. We have variable width curb and grass medians. We're looking to provide on-street parking and curb extensions in specified areas. And we'll be conducting traffic signal reconstruction. We're looking at numerous safety projects or safety components to include a pedestrian hybrid beacon at Graham Avenue. We'll have access management changes at several driveways. So what I did not previously mention in the last presentation, as you look at these, again, public coordination, public engagement is critical in these two projects. We'll have drainage upgrades. Anytime we move the curb lines, we understand that many of these drainage components will be impacted. So drainage upgrades will be included. Lighting analysis and retrofitting, landscaping and hardscaping. We do have some mature oak trees throughout the corridor. Again, looking at those, um, again, significant when we look at public engagement. Next slide, please. As in the previous presentation, this is just a um, just an excerpt from the concept plans, just indicative of things that will be throughout this corridor. As you see the on-street parking, this will not replace going through the technical scopes that will be provided to look at the of these conceptual plans. Thank you. Next slide. More the same, we do see some of the medians that were discussed. We do see the bulb outs that were discussed and the enhanced marking for the pedestrian safety. Next slide. 
before I move on to this slide, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier. These slides were just an example of what you'll find in the technical scope and the conceptual plans. Um, please review those when they're uploaded on the cap for your presentation and your letter, as well as you provide your letter. So again, this is in downtown Orlando, in the urban core, the neighborhood district and the milk district. We have some key stakeholders to include the Orlando Fire Department Station 6, which is adjacent to the project. We have the Orlando Executive Airport to the east within the limits, Festival Park, Hampton Park, and T.G. Lee Dairy along the corridor. There's a mix of lighting and commercial and residential properties. So not only will we have municipalities and stakeholders, we have to coordinate with that. We'll also have many of the personal and property owners that we'll have to coordinate moving through. Single family and multifamily units as we discuss it. Next slide, please. As we look at the public engagement plan, consistent, often, we need to coordinate from the beginning until the end, ensuring that our concept is well received from the public, they understand our intents, and understanding that safety is the number one priority, with Vision Zero being a number one priority. As we move forward in our transportation plans, safety, safety, safety. Can't say enough about that. Next slide, please. As the other ones, these two schedules will be concurrent with the project being advertised on May 17th, 2021. As we look at the letters for the short list, long list, the letters will be based on the previous project presented, 441143-2. Again, I'm very excited to present these projects. This is really embracing the safety and the intent of District 5 as we look at the multimodal usage throughout our corridors. I welcome any questions for both of these projects at this point in time. All right, there is one question, Joseph, it's not for you. Um, it, it, it said, is this presentation being recorded and will it be made available for the consultants? If so, can you please send the link? This presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to the CAP plan. Um, there's also another question. Can you repeat the TRC members for the Robinson Street projects? Yes, ma'am, I certainly can. The um, list shortlist, one single point of contact will be Ed Kestry, while the grading TRC will be Miss Annette Brennan, Todd Long, and Todd Alexander. And then the next question, Joseph, is how many, how many firms will be shortlisted? I believe there'll be three. Again, this is in, in, in flux, but there will be three with one selected. You mentioned extensive public involvement already started in coordination with the city. Has the feedback been positive this far? Yes, again, they are welcoming the safety improvements. Part of my intent as we begin the kickoff of this design project is to coordinate already with the PD&E and, and, and those people that have developed this coordination and continue to work from that. So it has been positive as I have received I have the minutes from previous notes, um, excuse me, previous meetings that have been conducted, and I'll share that with the winning design consultant. All right, this is a question, just a general question. Can we meet all TRC and the shortlist personnel prior to the advertisement or only the shortlist personnel? I believe you can meet all of them beforehand. It's a marketing meeting. All right, Joseph, I think we're good. So I will introduce Jude Jean Francois next. Perfect. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jude Jean Francois. I am the project manager for project 447603-1. Um, this is State Road 492, um, Northeast 14th Street at Northeast 25th Avenue. Um, this project is a traffic signal reconstruction or an intersection improvement. Um, the project is in um, located, like, like I mentioned before, in Northeast Ocala in Marion County um, in the Northeast quadrant of City of Ocala. Next slide, please. The purpose of the project is to provide crash reduction countermeasures at the intersection. Um, we construct existing traffic signal and minor intersection improvement in accordance to 
FDOT design manual requirement. The project is based on a request from District 5 Safety Office um, to implement the recommendation of the State Road 492 um, based on a safety study completed in March 2020, which I will make sure that is uploaded after the presentation. Um, next slide, please. Schedule and estimated cost. The design is anticipated to have a notice to proceed um, November 2021 with an estimated cost of um, $410,000. All required scope of the project are within the existing right of way and the established um, easement. And the estimated construction cost is $668,000 and the, with the letting date of August 2023. Next slide, please. Um, the project context classification is a C3C, C3CC um, um, suburban commercial. Um, State Road 492 is a connecting route from US 301 to State Road 40, um, commercial to the east of the intersection, residential to the west of. Um, um, there is actually the, there's a mobile home park in the southwest quadrant. Um, gas station on the northeast corner, shopping plaza in the northeast and the southwest quadrant as well. Okay, um, actually, next, next slide. Okay, stakeholders. Um, some of the stakeholders um, are Marion County, o um, Ocala Electric Utilities, Wells Fargo, Tico, um, Tico People Gas, um, CenturyLink, as you can see here, and also Unity Fiber. Next slide, please. Okay, some potential issues and concern. Um, the project has um, minimal impact on the general community um, and drivers and is not expected to have any major dispute from the public. Um, we will need an LFA um, from the city of Ocala um, for the mass arm, which we will need to be coordinated in the early stages of the project. Um, there is actually, I uh, mentioned before, a mobile home that is located very close to the corner of the southeast side of the intersection, which will require um, early communication and engagement with that owner. Um, one of the major um, concerns will be the utility coordination. Um, that will be very extensive with this project. Um, mass arm are proposed because it's to minimize the utility coordination and conflict. Um, as mentioned, the utility coordination will be required to determine um, adjustments, so there are no conflict with the proposed construction. Um, some other concerns include um, maintenance of traffic and reduction noise during construction. Next slide, please. Okay, public engagement plan. Um, the PEP strategy is to maintain an open line communication with the public and the community. Um, the some of the individual property owners outreach and public meetings. Um, the design public meeting will include notification, advertisement, flyers, um, narrative presentation, meeting handouts. Um, other form of public engagement will include, you know, um, CFO roads, so and pre-construction outreach plan. Um, next slide, please. Some key data reminders: the project is to advertise May 24, 2021. We have a production date, June 1st, 2023, and the letting date is August 30th, um, 2023. Um, the TRC members are Todd Helton, um, Gabor, Kyle Howard, and then um, our main TRC will be Ashraf Amirati. And right now, I'll, I'll take any questions. Do you guys have any questions? Jude, there is a question, but it's not for your project, but I will ask it. Um, Joseph, there is a question. It says both projects 441143-2 and 447106-2 have decent design fees. However, department will select only one firm. Has the department given any thought of selecting two firms so that another firm can be get benefited to work due to the current financial crisis? That is a great question. Um, that is a question that I would have to address through my management and my supervisor. So we will address that and we'll have to get back to you on that. Thank okay. you. 
Jude will wait a few more minutes. Okay. All right, I think you're good, Jude. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you everyone, have a good day. Next, I would like to introduce Jean Verano. Good morning. Um, this project, 447117, is a US-1 northbound bridge replacement over Turnbull Creek. It's located in uh, southern Volusia County. Next slide, please. And the graphic uh, again shows you that is the Brevard County line uh, down in the bottom right hand corner and the approximate uh, location uh, is uh, noted on US 1. The current bridge is structurally, uh, structurally deficient from an April 2019 inspection. The southbound uh, US 1 bridge was replaced in 2006 and a TIF easement is needed to complete this project. Next slide please. So the schedule and estimated costs include design uh, will begin in September of 2021 with an estimated design cost of a million dollars. The uh, right of way is not particularly an acquisition. Uh, the process will begin approximately August of 2023 and will involve securing a TIF easement. Construction is estimated for letting in January of 2026 at a cost of $2.8 million. Next slide, please. The scope of the work um, for this bridge replacement project will include, but is not limited to, raising the northbound profile to match the southbound bridge uh, profile. New concrete bridge structure uh, within um, a 175 foot right of way footprint with six foot wide inside shoulders, 10 foot wide outside shoulder, and two 12 foot wide travel lanes. It should consist of six 30-foot spans for a total length of 180 feet with flat slab decking. Pile vents using 24-inch square pre-stressed concrete piles is anticipated. You will need to design for removal of the existing bridge piles. There will be some drainage modifications necessary, and there are significant permitting issues anticipated. Next slide, please. This graphic shows you the, um, the scenario. Uh, you can see the uh, southbound bridge is on the top. There's a north arrow there that has been replaced and we're looking for a companion bridge northbound, showing approximate locations of the bridge and um, where our wetlands are and our right of way are. Next slide, please. And again, another aerial photograph. Um, this aerial photograph is showing you uh, the locations, the two bridges, that is Turnbull Creek in the photograph. You can see some turbidity barrier around a couple of transmission lines. FPL in the last year has been providing new transmission lines, hardened concrete poles uh, through US-1 throughout the corridor. And again, happened to be timely that that was uh, shown in the photograph. Next slide, please. Potential concerns and issues, sure. Difficult um, maintenance of traffic with diversions are needed and U-turn accommodations required. There are environmental concerns, which leads to extensive permitting necessary. Uh, we'll need to coordinate um, wide load permitting and there will be uh, limited room for cranes and equipment. Next slide, please. The public engagement plan is uh, pretty straightforward uh, because it is a rural area, but we will have agency coordination with a multitude of agencies. There will be some pre-construction outreach, outreach and we will utilize Central Florida roads throughout the design and construction uh, for public engagement of whatever types may be necessary. Next slide, please. Well, there you go. That kind of wrapped it up quickly. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and um, answer them for you. Okay, Jean, we do have one question. It says, was a PD&E study and BDR done for the bridge replacement? Hmm, uh, PD&E, no, I don't believe so. Okay, 
and BDR, mm, not for the northbound. Okay. Um, the next question is it's just a general question. Can you please make the attendance list available? Yes, the attendance list will also be available. Um, Gene, I believe this is for you. Will scour analysis be required? I'm sure. Let me add, Jennifer, um, okay. before somebody asks that question. Okay. I'm sure that interested consulting firms are going to be sending me requests for the existing bridge plans because that will be germane to demolishing and rebuilding the new. Um, in general, bridge plans are exempt, but we are uh, working on our process to provide you with a public records request for these exempt documents uh, through our legal department. And we are right at the moment uh, working on a, uh, like the other projects, you will be able to go to Central Florida Roads to click a link to start the process to request the plans that we have. And our intention is to provide you with everything we have, including the uh, existing bridge plans, uh, bridge maintenance reports, inspection reports, um, any plans for resurfacing in the general area, any survey that we have, any right-of-way maps that we have. You're going to get a complete package, but you will have to follow a process, and that should be on Central Florida roads uh, within a day or two. We just have to work out those details. Okay, there's another question for you. Sounds like you've already done extensive work on determining bridge type. Are you looking for innovation to improve those options? I think it, I, I don't believe it would be proper to say no, we don't look for innovation because the department does look for innovation. However, you'll have to make your own decision on if that's prudent, considering this is a companion bridge to the other. Um, again, uh, having the bridge at a profile that matches the other um is is a part of the scope you know so again you're gonna have to make your own decisions there how you're going to approach your letter of interest and gene what is the ad date of your project i'm sorry if it was could we scroll back up i may not have that information right in front i, of I right actually know it. it's it's june 7th of 2021 thank you you're welcome and there will be uh Plenty of marketing meeting opportunities, um, and I guess that's access through the cap plan. So, all right, we'll wait just a few more minutes. Any other questions? All right, Gene, I think you're good. All right, well, I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, and just um, for information again, um, we will be hosting quarterly presentations for the project. Um, so we will send out those dates when the time gets close. Um, we also, I just want to go over the TRC marketing meetings. Again, you can request a 15 minute meeting with the long list, short list TRC, and you can request one 15 minute um, meeting with the grading TRC. Those meetings will be available on our CAP plan and they will be available before these projects advertise. Um, also, just make sure you always um, check the cap for any updates. Sometimes things happen and dates change, but just always um, update, look at the updates on the cap. All right, is there any other questions before we? All right, I think we are good. Thank you all for attending.